بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا السماء فطرت وإذا الكواكب تثرت وإذا البحار فجرت وإذا القبور بوسرت علمت نفس ما قدمت وأخرت يا أيها الإنسان ما غرك برب بك الكريم الذي خلقك فسواك الذي خلقك فسواك فعدلك في أي صورة ما شاء ركبك كلا بل تكذبون بالدين وإن كراما كاتبين يعلمون ما تفعلون إن الأبرار لفي وإن الفجار لفي جحيم يصلون يوم الدين وما هم عنها بغائبين وما أدراك ما يوم الدين ثم ما أدراك ما يوم الدين يوم لا تملك نفسك لنفس شيئا يوم لا تملك نفس نفس لنفس شيئا والأمر يومئذ لله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلى الله على محمد وعلى محمد
Brother Mustafa. Let's all recite another loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Dear respected brothers and sisters, again, I welcome you to our MIC programs. We have a program at here every single Friday night at 8 p.m. Uh, feel free to follow us at our MIC media pages on Instagram, uh, Twitter, our website. Uh, we're in talks of maybe having Snapchat, TikTok, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but you can follow our programs and see the amazing speakers, inshallah, that we bring on. Uh, I'd just like to remind you that uh, for the duration of the program, if you could please keep your mask on, socially distance. We have stickers on the benches. I know I'm saying that as I'm not wearing a mask, but as soon as I come down, I will. Now, without further ado, please help me welcome Haj Rusan uh, Bezi. He's going to be speaking on the difference between living and being alive. Now, I don't know what exactly he's going to come up and discuss, because for me, the answer is easy. If you, you haven't truly lived unless you've met Haj Rusan. So, inshallah, we are looking forward to a very fascinating presentation by Haj Rusan. Please help me welcome him to the podium of Allah Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. I really don't know what to say after that, Sayyid, so... Salam ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين In the Quran it states and it says وأقم الصلاة لذكري Establish prayer so you may remember me I'm going to use this verse, inshallah, a little bit later, but I'm going to set up a process. But first, before I do that, I want to share a little story with you that somebody just shared with me not too long ago. And I swear to you, when I was sitting just to have dinner, this person was reading a book, and this is the story they shared with me. They opened the book, and it completely related to the subject matter of tonight. I'm going to read it to you verbatim, and... Insha'Allah, we'll also connect this at the end. But here's the story and here's what it states. A samurai and the love of his life had just gotten married and were traveling by boat to their honeymoon when a huge storm overtook them. And from there, somebody's calling me, I'm sorry. <laughs> the samurai's wife began to tremble. She's afraid. In the Quran, it states, When a wave overtakes them, this aspect, this next part is so beautiful. They supplicate to Allah. With what? Tranquil hearts. Hearts of submission. The emotion is intact. But now, watch this. She begins to be afraid. She begins to tremble. All of us, when our life is on the line, and it's about to be taken, we begin to shake. Your identity will tell you who you are at that moment. Now watch. When... When she ran then to her husband, she found him perfect, she found him peacefully looking out into the ocean. As, as if the sun was out and the waves were calm. He had a state of calmness. Ya ayyuha nafsin mutma'inna. Oh, that soul that's secure. Remember this point a little bit later on. She ran up to him and yelled, How can you be so calm? 
when we're about to die. Then she says, do you not value your own life? When the samurai heard her say that, he pulled out a sword, put it to her neck, and then asked her, aren't you afraid? She laughed, and she said, and he said to her, why are you laughing? She says, I know you love me, and you would never hurt me. The samurai smiled and said, Well, I too am in the hands of the one who loves me. So how can I be afraid? Who is that person? Who is that for you? When everyone leaves you, who is that? Do you pick up the phone and call your best friend? Who do you call? That's a key point. When the world desert, deserts you, يَوْمَ يَفَرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مَرْءٍ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يَغْنِيهِ You will flee from who? Your brother, your mother, your father your spouse, your kids. On that day, everyone will have something that will occupy them. You are an individual. You're responsible for your own soul. How does this work? How do you get to that point where there's something in your heart? Each one of you right now, seriously, check your pulse. If you're not moving right now just a little bit, check your pulse. Feel life. Feel it. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. There is a spiritual birth and there's spiritual death. You are born in this world twice. I'm going to explain. The first part I'm going to talk about is your first connection. You have three connections. You have three relationships. There are more, but there's three relationships I'm going to talk about. The first relationship is with Allah. The second, if you establish that properly, the second relationship is with yourself. Man arafa nafsa, faqad arafa rabba. The second relationship is with yourself. The third relationship is with other people. There's a relationship with nature also, and a relationship with temptation. I'm not going to go into those. I'm just going to use the first three. Now, on the first level, understand this. In your heart, each one of you has a heart. Allah does not, in the Quran, He states, He does not create a person with two hearts. There's one heart that's inside of you. There's one keyhole on your heart. There's one keyhole. This, this keyhole only has one key. It only has one key. Can anybody guess what the key is? There's a beautiful hadith. And it says, this is not the answer. But I just want to give you a little more. In this hadith, it says, there is no land or the heavens, Allah is talking to us, that can hold me. Except what? The heart of a believer. Do you really understand what that means? Seriously, really think about that. Your own, your own heart is the only thing that can occupy Allah. So on that level, what does it mean to be alive? What does it mean? Is it emotion? 
Is it a condition? Do I have to love someone? What is it? Some of us are spiritually dead. Some of us will get born maybe even tonight. You don't know. So on that level, can anyone just guess right now, what is that key? Can anybody tell me? Just guess. It's okay. You want to be the first? Let me see who's the hero. Can anybody really have some courage? A lot of us, mashallah, we have muscles. But do we have mental muscle? There's a difference. See, I'm, I'm literally playing with you here. I'm trying to get somebody to, their heart to move, mashallah. There we go. See? I knew I'd get it. Go ahead. <clears throat> Excellent. Excellent. Anybody anybody have another answer? Who's got more courage than my first brother? Yes, there's one key to the to the to the heart. What's that? Beautiful. I love that. What else? Rahma, mercy. Beautiful. What else? Anybody can give me. Food. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful saying. <laughs> That's the key to the stomach. That's why Allah makes us fast. He said food, by the way. We don't want people online. Okay. In the Quran, it states, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ These verses are so beautiful. It's the facet of dhikr. That God remembrance, that you understand that you and your heart are living. But is Allah in between that? Know that Allah intervenes between you and your heart. We are closer to Him than His own juggler being. But Allah promises you something. Listen to this. He says this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa man attaba'a hudai fala yadillu wa la yashqa. Whoever follows my path, whoever follows my, my message, whoever follows what I tell them to do, what happens? They will live a happy life. Wa man a'arada an dhikri, dhikr. And whoever goes against what my message forgets about me, my remembrance. And please pay attention to the next point, because this is the key to the connection. Surely he will have a dis depressed life. Think about that. Think of the time we live now. We're talking of if the heart is alive or is it dead. The next aspect is so important. When you begin to understand this, and you take this key, and you plug it into what? Your heart. When you turn that key, what do you think is going to happen? You connect. That's your spiritual birth. That's the power. You become alive. The soul is activated. There's something that happens to you. I'm telling you this because this happened to me. I was just like everyone else. And I'm not saying everyone else is bad. I was just a normal person. Just doing what thing needed to be done. I didn't care about religion that much. I didn't really understand what direction I needed. I didn't. And mashallah, the saint's father was one of the main people that helped me and directed me to find my way. I went on a retreat. I didn't belong there. I had a tight shirt on. People were looking at me. I had gel in my hair. I still have gel in my hair. Okay? And I'm just, I don't feel like I fit, but I didn't care. I didn't care. And I went. And when I went, I swear to you. When I came back, it was four days. I was a different person. 
I walked up to a fence. It was tall. I climbed it. I sat on top of it. And I'm wondering, who am I? Do I go back to the side? And I'm watching. And I'm watching everyone. It was like a transformation for me. But I didn't know. I didn't know what I was experiencing. I didn't know what was going on in my heart. But something happened. I don't know what it was. At the moment, I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. And I sat on the fence for a long time. I didn't know which side to climb back to. I was in torment. My soul was in torment. It was going back and forth, back and forth. I didn't know. But the emotion that I touched, I could not ignore. There was something inside the heart. I couldn't ignore it. I couldn't. And I sat there. And I waited. And something happened. I'm not going to talk about it. I decided I made a decision to turn the key. And I climbed down the other side. As soon as my feet hit the ground, I knew I was different. Something had changed. I didn't know what. Something changed. And now, what do I do with myself? I'm walking away from people I knew. All my friends are telling me you're going to Bin Laden school. The hell's wrong with you? Seriously, these are things. Sorry to use the word hell, but that's, that's what I was getting. But I didn't care. I didn't care who wanted to lead my life. I don't know. I felt complete. There was no void. All my voids. I was lonely. I had my own problems. They were gone. Everything was gone. I don't know how. I don't know what happened. But it was gone. I felt fulfilled. Then I looked over where I was. I looked at the other side. And it scared me. I'm like, oh my God, that's where I was. And I looked across and I saw so many people. But I couldn't judge because I didn't know where I was. But then I had to make another decision. I had to walk away from the guys. And once you start that journey, there's no turning back. You walk. And subhanAllah. But what you touch is this. There are emotional reservoirs in your heart that you were trying to fill from the other side of the fence. Now, when you turn the key and you begin that dhikr, and Allah says, Hem, come back to me. Submit to me. Connect to me. I'm the first relationship you're going to have. Come to me. And you begin to submit your heart to Allah. Your emotional reservoirs are being connected to what? Love, as the Sayyid mentioned. They're being connected and filled by who? An ultimate resource. Ultimate. It's unlimited. It's constantly what? Giving. It does not stop. Love, mercy, al mawadda wa rahma as sakina and nukra says all these things. Your heart connects to that. But it's an endless source. And you realize that everything else is a resource. That awakening is incredible. Because now you're going to the unlimited versus what? The limited. Once that source begins to fill your emotional state, guess what happens? This is the key. Your heart becomes an ocean of emotions. You become a giver. Why? Because you feel abundance in your heart. Your heart is filled. There's no void. There's no void in my heart that I need to connect to another person. I need to connect to wealth. I need to connect to security from other things 
that need to fill the voids that I have. Loneliness is a void that I have. Why? Because I don't have the correct relationships. So therefore, I feel lonely. Go to social psychology, you'll see this. But what is the relationship structure? What is your dominance hierarchy? What is the importance hierarchy that you have? Is your heart alive? Or is it what? Dead. Are you emotionally rich? Or are you emotionally polished? What happens if you don't do this? Now, I'm gonna before I go to that, there's one more thing I need to connect the second relationship to. The most beautiful thing that happens is this. Once you connect like that and you connect to the ultimate resource, the one thing that Allah begins to give you is security. Security fills the heart. Remember the samurai? How come he's so calm in a state of fear? Well, your own life is on the line. Who can give me something about Imam Hussein like this when he's standing on the land of Karbala? And he says to Allah, he says, Ya Allah, if this pleases you, take as much as you want. Let the swords take me. Look at countless stories of Imam Ali where he is in the middle of battle and he hands over his sword to his enemy. What gives you that kind of security? When your heart is full of fear, when chaos is all around you with a hurricane that's really moving an ocean, a hurricane moves an ocean. It moves a body of water that's that big. Do you realize what kind of power do you have to have to be able to move that amount of water? But your heart is still bigger than that. It has more power than a hurricane when you can maintain that safety, that calmness when the fear strikes. And now, a lot of us, we think that when the Imam comes out, what do you think is going to happen? You think you're not going to be tested with fear? You think that just, oh, there's the Imam, I'm just going to go follow him. I know that. I know he's there. You don't think you're going to be tested by fear? Some of us, we haven't built our heart enough to be able to submit our fear to our cause. We haven't trained ourselves enough. So now, when the heart becomes alive, <clears throat> the first thing you want to do is you want to connect to Allah. Wa'qim salata dikri Establish prayer for my remembrance. Allah says, you want to come to me? Establish this first. When you establish prayer, three levels. I'm going to give this real quick and I'm going to move on. I don't have enough time. The first level is Al-Mi'raj. That's the first level. Al-Mi'raj is when the heart, it connects to Allah. It opens. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. What happens? The heart expands. Your heart opens. You turn the key. That's the first level. Second level is al khul the second level in the heart is when you detach, you start detaching from the world. The heart, it, because it's so filled, you disconnect. You retach to the source and you detach from every resource. That's when the heart is disconnecting. And when you detach like that, you have strength. Because you pull the one, you become indifferent. Which is a level we get to, is a zuhd. Zuhd is being indifferent. I gain something, I gain it. I don't gain it, I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. The heart becomes indifferent. It's not attached to anything worldly. When you don't do this in your life, you will have to do it the second you die. The second of separation, if you don't pray, you will feel the weight then. The minute you take a dollar from someone, you will feel the weight then. You're not going to feel it now. Nothing happens to you. I take a dollar, nobody saw me, Nothing's going to happen to you. The second the soul is being separated from the body, you will feel that weight. Understand that. 
والنازعات غرقا والناشطات نشطا when Allah swears by what the angels that pull out the soul violently that detachment is going to happen you don't want that angel when he swears by the soul by the angels that pull out the soul softly watch a person dying go wash a dead body awaken yourself and take that key and unlock your heart and let Allah's love come into your heart Allah's emotions in terms of what he wants to happen inside your heart then you become alive that's your birth that's your spiritual birth what happens if you don't do that on the other end before i finish let me finish the third step now more what happens on the other end when we don't become emotionally rich we become emotionally impoverished our heart turns into a desert not an ocean of emotion it turns into a desert it becomes dry we're not givers we're takers we flip the script the third level is al fana this is the stage of imam ali alayhi salam when when he gets connects to allah this is as you ascend in prayer as you hit higher levels in prayer this is what happens to you the third level al fana when imam ali alayhi salam he says when i look at something i see nothing but allah over it under it in it doesn't matter that's another stage now what happens when allah gives you that security and you're fulfilled in your heart this connects the second relationship the relationship with who yourself i want to give you something real quick the second relationship right now think about it preteens preteens means 13 to 15 even 12 the suicide rate has jumped from 2010 to now by 153% in one decade think about the relationship with the self suicide is the ultimate self hate and it's so prevalent now why why how much do you have to hate yourself you want to take your life when you look on the inside and that mirror that's on the inside and you see your own reflection your mental reflection do you like that person or do you hate that person that's not easy and i'm not telling you it's easy for that person who's like that but i'm telling you i see it and it's happening all over so many people are hurting from the inside and it's the saddest place because it's so lonely it's so lonely and when you get a call from a mother and you feel her heart is coming out of her chest why because her daughter or her son What do you do? So all I'm saying to you guys is get the first relationship right. If you don't, this world will take you and it will drown you. Guaranteed, it's happening. Trust me, it's all over. There is a psychological war that's happening. And that war is meant to buy real estate in your mind and you can't stop it not even you you know how it's done you have better relationships with this thing now than you have with people look it's i swear to you it's ringing in my head see what i'm saying 
distractions. Instagram, Facebook, all these are designed to be very addictive. They're designed, the actual apps themselves, they're designed to be what? Very addictive. They're designed to hook you. You're the product. You know how? To advertisers. You're the product. Try to put this thing away for an hour. Watch how many times you remember it. Count them. If you dare, put it away for an hour. Watch how many times this thing will go off in your own head. It's already got its own alarms in your own head. You've been programmed. Congratulations. I'm not telling you it's a bad thing, but use it properly. There's, I just want to tell you guys, it's a side note. There's a documentary on Netflix. Please go home and watch it. It's by the top experts in every field. The person who created the like button is on in that documentary. The person who created it. And they're all telling you, all of them, stay away. They don't know what they've created. I'm not saying social media is a bad thing overall. But it's a monster. And that it's a virus that's unleashed inside of you. You can't even control it. Now, it's called the social dilemma. Write it down. Please watch it. It's called the social dilemma. Now, when you get to a point, you have a relationship with yourself. Three levels. If you get to a point where you become what? That soul that's secure. Ya ayyuhan nafsun mutma'inna. That means you've turned on the key of dhikr. You've submitted properly in your own heart. You've established prayer. You're on that road. And now you've become that ocean. You have abundance in your heart. What happens when you have abundance and you're fulfilled? Do you need anything to plug into your heart? No. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, he said, I stood on the gate of my heart and let nothing in but the love of Allah. The keys. It's incredible. When you do that, the heart becomes abundant. It's no longer a desert. It's no longer scarce. Look at people who are out in the clubs, who are out in just after money, after certain things, I swear to you, I've talked to so many. I'm just giving you my own experience. It doesn't mean that everyone's like that. It's just my own experience. The heart is dry. Why? Because it's spiritually dead. There's no time put into that category. Your spiritual infant, when you just get born, and you think you don't need to grow, I just gave you how you need to grow in terms of those aspects. Spirituality needs conditioning. You need to work out every single day. And Allah gives you five times a day. He says, work this. You do this, watch what will happen to your heart. Come to me. Plug that in properly, watch what will happen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad. Now, when I have that heart of abundance, what happens? Here's what happens. I begin to actually have care for myself. I look in the mirror. I don't see image problems, body dysmorphia. I don't see these things. I am fulfilled. I am connected properly. When I look out and I see myself, I have respect for myself. I take care of my health. I take care of my oral hygiene. I take care of my prayers. I take care of me as a person. I don't want anyone to take care of me. I'm taking care of myself. I become financially dependent. I become what? Relationship. My relationships, I build them to a higher level. My self-development, I'm responsible for my spirituality, I'm responsible for. My community, I become responsible for. My health, I become responsible for. Look at the independence Allah has given you. 
Now, when you become like that, what happens when you're secure? Here's what happens in terms of there's four attachment styles in psychology. Anybody know the attachment theory? Anybody have heard of it? Okay. There's one person, a couple people. Three people, four. Okay, mashallah, a lot of psychology people in here. Okay, great. So now, the attachment theory, one, one of the actual attachment styles is a secure attachment. SubhanAllah. After how many years? Just psychology, 101, 30 years. It's a secret. Okay, don't tell anyone. But at the end of the day, I'm telling you, SubhanAllah, just touch the religion. Open this thing up. I swear to you, the heart will open. Ask Allah. Allah, I can't feel. Allah, al qalbi mahjoob. There's ad'iyah for this. We have, we have actual supplications. My heart is sealed. I don't know how to connect to you. Show me. Show me, please. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I'm confused. Please, I'm coming to you. You're the ult ultimate resource. I don't want to connect to anything else. My heart is not made to connect to anybody else. You're the first key. Please give me that key. That's all I want. Ask. Wallah, just sit down, you and yourself, and reflect, and just sit and say, Ya Allah, please, I don't know what's happening to me. I want to share something with you. Please, take this with you. My mom is not doing that well. She's lost all capability to literally move. She's watching now. But she calls me over. She grabs my hand. She can only literally use her right hand. And you know what she does? She does this. She's having a very difficult time speaking. We can't understand her. But we just, by gestures, we understand. She says, this bed is a godly prison. She goes, that world outside, that's a worldly prison. She goes, don't get trapped. She's giving me motivation. Look where she's at. I have my everything. But when Allah starts to take things away from you, be very careful. With what you have right now, be very careful. Where your legs take you, be very careful. What your hands open, be very careful. Because those things are going to speak against you. When you get to that point and you can't move, that is a place you don't want to be. Then it's too late. That patience that you have to have when you can't move and no one can help you, only have one door and it's what? It's up. No one's going to come to your aid. Trust me. No one. No one will come. There's nothing that they can do. Allah challenges. It says, وَإِلَىٰ بَلَغَتَ التَّرَاقِ وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقِ It says, when the, when the soul reaches the collarbone and it's said who is coming? On the other side, the angels see the separation of your soul. And they start saying, who is coming? Then it says this, And at this moment, he knows it's the time of separation. It's time to go. There's no going back. What are you going to do with your own soul? Who are you going to ask for help? Who's going to come to your aid at that moment? Who? Cry, if you're going to cry right now, cry for your own soul. Cry for what's happening to you. The second that you're going to about to commit something, cry for that moment. Because Allah sees it. Where Imam Ali alayhi salam says, every action and every word you say, they're being written by the angels in a letter to Allah. Understand these things. Put them next to your heart and protect them. That's how you become alive. That's how you stay alive. No one can touch you. That if you're on a bed like that, you smile. I swear to you, 
the thing that gives me the most amazing strength is when I see my mom smile. It doesn't leave her face. She's in pain. There's that. But it, her smile, when I look in her eyes and I see her smile, it's in, how? How does a person where you're incapable of movement, but your lips speak a book? Just a simple movement of 17 muscles in your face, they just move. And that has so much power. Please, it's not about anyone. It's about you. It's you against you. Who's going to win? Turn your heart to where it becomes alive. Turn that key. Fill your heart with the right resource, the right love, the right care, the right attention from that resource. Connect it there. Once you do, your heart fills. Once your heart fills, you feel secure. Ya ayyuhan nafs al-mutma'inna irja'in ila rabbiki rawiyya ardiyya. My God. Oh, that soul that's secure. Your heart is secure. And when your heart becomes secure, you can smile on that bed. I'm okay. The Imam Ali alayhi salam sits in the bed of who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Why? Because he's secure. They wanted to kill Rasulullah. Imam Ali alayhi salam, where? Took his place. Ken your cause be greater than your own life? Will you put your own life on the line for your cause? Is your heart that strong? Does it have that kind of faith? If you don't hold it, it doesn't matter the challenge. Challenge me. I'm here. Here's my flag. Here's what I represent. I'm right here. And I'm not moving. This is my belief structure. Is your heart like that? Can you go in the next five minutes? Can you? Are you ready? Challenge yourself. See. It scares the hell out of me. Me personally. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm up here. I'm saving myself. I don't know. Will Allah accept this? Maybe, maybe there's something so deep in my heart that my intention is not pure. I don't know. Maybe I want you to cry so I feel better. Look, look at me. I'm doing this. Maybe that's there. I don't know. I have to watch my intention. I have to watch my own heart. Now what happens when you have security in the heart and you're abundant in terms of your own giving? When the heart opens and it's full of abundance and it overflows towards other people. In the Quran, it says what? لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا المودة في القربة. For everything the Prophet did, he says, I want nothing from you. That heart, you know what happens to it? It only gives, it doesn't want to take. True love between you and that person is when you're totally wanting to give. And I don't expect anything in return. Why? Because I'm fulfilled. I'm secure. I don't need you to plug into me to make me feel what? Not lonely. My heart is already what? In a state of abundance. So now, imagine you have two people like that who come together and they have the third relationship. One heart is abundant and it has the love of Allah. The next heart is also abundant and it also has the what? The love of Allah. But both hearts are overflowing. I'm doing this for you and this action, not because what? I'm looking for something in return. I'm giving. It's in a state of giving. Who's always in a state of giving? Who? Who? Allah Azza wa Jal is always giving you, no matter what you do. Even if you commit the worst sins, He's always raising the sun the next day on your what? So you, nothing will happen to you. He goes even further. Allah says, well, trade with me. What happens when you trade with me? This is what happens. If you commit it, if you do a, 
one good thing, I will multiply it by ten. If you do one bad thing, it's only counted as one. That's it. And take it further. He says, if you repent, I will turn your sins into what? Good deeds. My God, how much more do you want? Seriously, think about this. How much mercy does Allah have to have for you to have mercy in your own heart? I'm going to finish with this. The first relationship is Allah. Once you connect and your heart is fulfilled, you become really secure. Once you become secure, then your relationship with yourself, you have, it's not self-conceit, you look at yourself in a respectful way. There's self-love, there's self-admiration. You care for yourself, your oral hygiene, your own health, your own heart. Everything means something to you. You have the love for the self because you're a creation of Allah. I have to take care of it because it's my responsibility. So my own relationship with myself takes a greater level. My self-efficacy goes up. My self-confidence goes up. My self-esteem goes up. Everything goes up when you connect to Allah. Allah uses us as the criteria to get to know Him. And He says, Man arafa nafsa, faqad arafa rabda. You have to get to know who? You. Now, on that level, when you connect to the third person, which is the, the third relationship, which is you and other people, what happens? You're constantly in a state of giving. Your confidence is high. You take other levels that people will not step into what? The danger. You're running towards the fire. Other people are running away. Look for those situations. That's when the heart is intact. Now, when you connect to other people, I'm going to give you something that's very important. And please pay attention to this. And I'm ending with this. What happens when you and your heart have different emotions? I'm going to give you two different emotions. And I'm, literally, I'm going to leave you with this to think about. There's a lot of science in what I'm saying. But there's also a lot of religion. It took me a long time to put this together. So please. And I'm, I'm saying a long time. I'm taking a long time. Take this with you. This is software for your mind. Download it and water it with your emotions. That means it needs to grow in your own heart. Here's how we look at things. There's something that I call the anorexic perspective. When a person looks in the mirror and they look at themselves and they're only 90 pounds, their perspective is I need to lose weight but I'm 90 pounds. Should this person eat or stay away from food? Should they approach food or avoid food? In their perspective, they should avoid. But it's a skewed sense of reality. The same thing can happen to you. Understand that. I can be looking directly at reality and see it in a skewed way where I approach the wrong things and I avoid the right things, my heart can become like that. Because my emotional code is wrong. In my heart, that driver is wrong. It's pushing me towards the wrong things. Now, I want to give you a prime example. When people either hold mercy in their heart or anger in their heart. When your heart is an ocean or your heart is a desert. Please follow along. When a person feels anger, can you be empathetic? Think about what I just said. If you hold anger in your heart, can you feel empathetic? Anger cannot exist without blame. When you blame, can you have mercy? It's very difficult. Very difficult. Now watch what happens to your perspective. When, when you either have mercy in your heart or what? Anger in your heart. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa muhammad wa alayhi muhammad. Walau kunta fadhan ghalib al-qalb lan fadhu min hawlik. If your heart was like a desert, 
and it was hard, people would have fled away from him. Watch this. Watch this point. Now, when a person holds mercy in their heart, what happens, that's a lens. It's an emotional lens. If your lens in your heart is emotional mercy, this is what happens. Your eye sees through mercy. Your eye has a merciful lens. Please, please pay attention to this point. And watch yourself the next time you do this. You do this on a daily level. In social psychology, there's something called the the fundamental attribution error. What that means is this. I'm going to tell you what that means. Just give me a second. But I need to finish this point. When your heart has a merciful lens and the eye has a merciful lens, when you judge someone, here's what happens. You're looking at a situation and you see the person. They cut you off. But your heart is full of mercy. You're empathetic. You feel with the person. Please just yell out some things and how you would think. If your heart is full of mercy, what would you think about this person? Please yell out some things real quick. I want to end, inshallah. If there's some time, we'll do a Q&A. But what would you think of this person that just cut you off, but your heart is merciful? What is it? Emergency. Watch, I'm going to categorize all this for you. Okay, emergency. What else? The person has an emergency. What else? What is it? They're having a bad day. Excellent. What else? What is it? Impatient. Think of that one. Think of impatience. Think of the other two. These are two categories that you guys are listing in. But the hardest thing when to really understand and become aware of something is the categories. We can't categorize. But watch when you categorize. Watch what happens. We said emergency. We said a bad day, right? Are you judging the person's personality or their situation? There's the two categories. When, when you judge with a merciful heart and a merciful eye, you'll go to the person's situation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says what? Give your brother what? How many excuses? How many? Say it loud. How many? Seventy. Seventy excuses. We started with who? Rasulullah's heart that is full of mercy. We ended with who? Rasulullah's saying that give your brother 70 excuses. When you give excuses to someone, are you judging their personality? Or are you judging their situation? When you have to give an excuse, what are you doing? You're judging their situation. And you have to give 70 different reasons. Can you sit there and judge for Lily? Think about it. How long would it take you to come up with 70 different excuses? How long? Would any of us do it? Would you sit there, okay, they're this, they're this, they're this. You wouldn't do it. After like five or six, you go, okay, khalas khayyeh. It's okay. It's okay. You're free to go. It's, you caught me off. You're having an emergency. Allah is sa'adak. Now, let's go to the other side. Watch this, please. What happens when your heart is full of anger? The eye is full of anger. And now you look at this person and they just cut you off. Which category are you going to put them in? Are you going to judge their character? Or are you going to judge their situation? Are you going to give them the 70 excuses? Are you even going to even think of an excuse? Are you going to even see the category at all? Your heart is quick to judge. And people's personality are easy to take down. Now what happens, this is the way I'm going to finish. Please take this in terms of your own psychology and how we work. Learn this stuff so you don't make the mistakes. And you think what? I'm completely justified. What's wrong with you? I don't realize that I have the emotional cancer. Now what happens? When you have emotional diseases like anger and other things, 
the eye becomes angry and it judges through anger. And you know what happens? You judge the person's personality. You judge their character. Now watch this. When it comes down to you and you judging yourself, watch what happens. When you judge that person and they cut you off with a harbored anger, you're going to judge their character. Look at this guy. Doesn't know how to drive. Look at what's going on. My God, people are these days. You cut me off, but how? You put your hand on the horn for how long? You give 70 seconds, not 70 what? Excuses. With your hand on what? The horn. Why? Because you're justified. You're angry. Why are you doing this to me? I'm a victim. You see what happens? Look at all these words that are coming out behind anger. Watch this. Please, just pay attention. And I'm going to get a little dramatic, okay? Watch. Slow down. Okay? You good? You ready? What happens when you cut someone off? Which category do you put your action in? Is it your personality? Do you judge your personality? Or do you judge your situation? When you cut that person off and they come up to you, what's the first thing you offer? An excuse. I'm just in a hurry. I'm late. My wife's pregnant. My dog is about to die. You give what? Surely, on that day, you're going to give forth your what? Excuses. Connect your heart to who? Allah. He's the only one that's going to accept those. No one else on that day. Judge with a merciful heart with the heart of the Prophet. Judge with that. When you do that, it changes your perspective. You put on a different lens. You don't put on a lens of anger. You put on a lens of mercy. And when you see through the lens of mercy, you'll judge people's situations. You won't judge their personality. Just like you would love to be judged, where someone will give you an excuse. See how important it is to have the right emotions in your heart. Who do you want filling that emotion? Who? Who's the source of mercy? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-Wadud. All these names of Allah. When they become stamped on your heart, that person becomes secure. And when they become secure, guess what? They become, your own emotions become a reflection of Allah. Because your actions change. Who you become changes. The way you move, the way you talk, everything changes. So for me, when I went on that retreat, four days, my heart flipped. I went over the fence. I landed on the other side. I walked away. It's been 20 years. I've never looked back. And I'm still walking away from the fence. I never thought I would be up here. Never. In 11th grade, I didn't talk to one person for a whole semester. I didn't even know how to put two words together. Now, try to stop me from talking. You can't. Something happened. I don't know what. But I love it. I swear to you. I would stand here for hours. And I don't care. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because this, every time I do this, it just, it just, there's something happens. It's incredible to me. My heart beats to a different rhythm. Turn that key, please. Grab it, that dhikr. Tonight, this is what I want you to do. Go home, set your alarm clock to what? Two o'clock in the morning. Wake up. Go down in your basement. You'll find a very quiet place. And make sure it's dark. And just ask Allah, help me. My heart is dead. It's not alive. Turn it on for me. Give me that key. I'm remembering you. And he 
says, when our sign in this world reached you, you forgot about it. So on that day, you will be forgotten. Don't forget. Why? Because of this last point. Everything he does is he has to Allah. Everything. Except man. He does what? Dhikr. Meaning remembrance. Why does he have to remember? Beautiful presentation by Sheikh Azhar. Beautiful. The way he did this was beautiful. And I'm taking this from him. He said that they have to do dhikr. Why? Why? Because they can forget. All of us can forget about what? Allah. Tonight, establish that. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ صَلَّى عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى مُحَمَّدْ I just want to say something real quick. And number one, if you guys can all just keep my mom in your prayers, please, I greatly appreciate it. It's number one. Number two, if you're having trouble, all of us have certain things that we're working on. All of us. Reach down deep in your heart. Whatever it is, grab it in your hand and say, Ya Allah, this is what I come to you with. I'm putting this in your hands. I'm putting my responsibility in your hands. Help me. Help me. That's the best place to do it. And the most powerful place on the face of this earth is when this which is the ultimate form of dignity, is placed on what? The lowest point, which is the ground. That's where the finite, which is you and me, meets the absolute. That's the gateway. When this touches the ground, that's the gateway right here. That is abundance. That is the ultimate resource. That is why we pray. It's a solution. It's not something that's obligatory because you have to do it. It's a solution. For what? To build the right things in here. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. If there's any questions, comments, concerns, feel, please feel free. Fadl sir. Habibi. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think that's a great question in terms of what impacts people. I think your your spiritual DNA, I think is all different. Everyone has a different frequency that they work with. I think someone who's very wise and capable can tune in to that frequency. You know, like an AM, you know, when you turn it to a, the AM frequency, it, you get static. Then when you turn it right to the right frequency, what happens? You can hear clearly. I think... Everyone has their own frequency. You have to be able to tune into that. So how do you do that? Is really, really being sympathetic than empathetic. Where you can live in the other person's shoes. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, I've stepped into the shoe of the man that is older than I. Reflected in his mind to understand the vicissitudes of time. Okay, so he's, he's an, actually in other, another person's perspective. I see their mental lens, and I also see their emotional lens. I see what emotion, the reality that's pushing them towards something. If I do that properly, if I do that properly, and I connect to both lenses, what happens? I can see maybe the cancer. I become a doctor. I become something that's really, really impactful of that. Why? Because I've heard the person enough to understand, but also feel with them in terms of what's going on. I feel their pain, but I also understand maybe where they're going wrong now. So I can apply the right medicine for that whatever spiritual disease may be there. And all of us have it. I'm not talking, we're just, I'm, I'm a doctor. No, all of us have this. 
We are all, we, all of us need to work on something. It's the one who finds the right mentorship that takes them to look at their what? Subconscious wiring. Nafsal mutma'inna, and I'll give you this say. You said events, and I'm going to take you this. I'm giving you this because every human being is, in, is literally a universe within themselves. So the person who does this with you, you've got to be very careful. Okay? Nafsal mutma'inna is this, is the person who takes their conscious mind and conquers what? Their subconscious mind. That's a nafsul mutma'inna. Sayyid Munil Khabbaz talked literally about this on the same platform here. He has a beautiful, beautiful presentation on, on Imam Ali alayhi salam. Look at that. It's incredible. Okay? And he talks about nafsul amara, nafsul lawama, nafsul, in, in terms of these, al uh, mutma'inna. But he says, he said this, he says, the true person who reaches the state of security is the person who can actually take their conscious mind and dominate their subconscious being, their subconscious mind. That's the ethnic man. Why? Because now the person knows themselves. They've unraveled themselves. That person, when, when, when you're talking events and stuff like that, it could be anything for anyone. One word, say it, can unlock someone's heart. One word, one event, one scene, a smile can unlock someone. You don't know. What I would tell you there, just be your own best version of yourself. Maintain your, your iman at the highest level at every second. Vibrate your heart when you're walking next to a person. Don't feel the wrong things. And then what? Transmit that. Not just the thinking, but the actual emotion that you can resonate in someone's heart. Because Imam Ali alayhi salam says, Man infalqa min al qalb, waqa fil qalb. Whatever comes out of the heart will enter the other person's heart. That vibration is so important. So I think it starts with just you as a person. If you see events and other things, I think some of the things overall, just put yourself in religious gatherings. I would say that's a major thing. If you're feeling spiritually dead, okay, put yourself around spiritual people. Put yourself who have knowledge. Put, put, put yourself around people like that. You can go to the, all these. I think these are just known. I think these are generally known. Okay, I have a spiritual problem. Should I pick up the Quran? Okay, so what is spirituality? Let's just answer that real quick. Spirituality is whatever pleases Allah. Whatever actions please Allah. Bottom line. If you're having this, find the right friends, find the right environments, find the right things that you need within yourself, because you are your own universe. What are the things inside of you that need to be changed? So environments matter, people matter, everything around you matters. But it's at the end of the day, where are you in your own heart? Okay? So I hope that answers the questions. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm going to take these off. They're really hurting me. Mm -hmm. There's what? I'm sorry? Yes, yes. So evil and... Yes. Yes. Okay, Re just rephrase just one more time. Because I want to make sure I, I answer you properly. And then I'm going to rephrase for you, and just so I understand you. But if you can rephrase for me. So, go ahead, just one more time. I, I got you. I got you. I understood. So, right now, it's, it's a great question, and I'm going to repeat it, because I've, I've 
other people have told me, okay, when people ask questions, please repeat them because the online stuff, okay? So what the question is, am I naive in terms of I'm always giving excuses? Oh my God, you know what I mean? Or should I be wise because there are people who are evil? Excellent differentiation. Okay, excellent. Why? Because this, this part is very important. We're talking general rules of regulations. You're applying the rule on specific matters. And to general rules, there are always what? Exceptions. We're talking about your own state of being and how you should judge. But you've got to be very careful who you do that with. That's what you're saying. It's very important. Now, wisdom would dictate, wisdom is what? Application of knowledge. That's what you're talking about. I just talked about what? The knowledge itself. I didn't talk about application, only one certain part. I didn't give the other parts, but you're correct, 100%. There are other applications to what we're talking about. Because not everyone can be treated the same way. So here's the question. Should I treat everyone with mercy? That's the question. Should I always have mercy in my heart? I'll give you a quick story about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he'd be walking and people would be throwing rocks at him. Isn't that a very difficult situation? Trash. Isn't that difficult? How would you feel if somebody did that to you? Imagine all of us, we lined up right now on Ford Road and you're going to walk through. You know what we're going to do to you? We're going to throw rocks at you as you walk by. And all the media and all the social media and everyone's going to record it and we're going to show you. And we're going to put you on display. You think you can handle that? It's very difficult. But what does the Prophet say? He says, Ya Allah, forgive my people. They don't know. It's very difficult to maintain mercy when the heart is angry. That's why I talked about those two. It's very difficult. To maintain mercy in the heart is to remove blame from the person and to set it towards the right source. What's causing this behind this person? That's also wisdom. You're taking it to another level of thinking and awareness. Now, I'm not telling you there's, not, there's evil people. I'm not saying no. This should not be done with what? Those kinds of people. But, but, what happens to your own heart? You need to maintain that for your own what? Sanctity. When you do that, then when you stand in the middle of battle, your heart is still what? It's still merciful. But it's defending for who? A different cause. That becomes a completely different reality. I'm not telling you not to hold your ground. Imam Ali, in the first battle, there were 71 warriors that were killed on the other side. 31 of them were killed by Imam Ali. They were warriors. Is Imam Ali have anger and just wants to kill? No, there's a cause. There's a greater cause. But that's the other side. That's application in terms of aggression towards the right thing. You see what I'm saying? That's the side you're talking about. How do I stand up to someone or I just don't give them an excuse? I give them an excuse to the last second. And I'll tell you this and I'll finish the story. Okay? Imam Ali in the middle of battle gives off his sword to someone that was fighting him. Could you do that? Could you be that secure? It's very difficult. Someone's trying to kill you, but you give them your sword. Then Imam Ali, he says, he says, you've never refused a beggar, and I'm begging for your sword. Imam Ali gives him his sword. Then look what he says. He says, who's going to protect you to Imam Ali? He says, death is my protector. That means if I'm supposed to die right now, I'm willing to go. Okay. But if I'm going to die tomorrow, are you going to kill me? Are you going to be able to kill me? You're not. How do you gain that kind of security? That kind of mercy? Now, can we get to this level where the person says this to him? 
Doesn't Imam Ali have to have mercy in his heart for someone who's trying to kill him? He says to him, I want to follow you. He says to Imam Ali, in the middle of battle, he's doing da'wah. He's calling people to who? Allah Azza wa Jal. Someone who's on the other side can't see the truth at all. And he's calling him to the way of Allah. Imam Ali puts down his sword. He puts down his sword. He says, I want to follow you. Look what he says to him. He says, follow principle, not personalities. SubhanAllah. These things, you can make movies on stuff like this. It's incredible. Seriously, how... Just... I'm not going to say anything. It just... I, 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 I just... To me, it just vibrates my whole body. Like, how does someone do that? How do you do that? How do you get your heart to submit to these kinds of laws? How? How? How, how can a person really do that? It's incredible to me. It should like blow your mind in terms of how someone can have that kind of control. Where does that come from? Ask yourself, where does that kind of control come from? That's the person who's submitted in here to Allah. He's protected, he's secure, it doesn't matter. But his heart is still full of mercy, even towards his enemy. It's very easy to love the people we love. It's very difficult to love the people who hate you. It's very difficult to pray for someone that doesn't like you. It's very difficult. So tonight, the higher spiritual form is to what? Go and dua. Everyone that doesn't like you, pray for them with a sincere heart. Watch what will Allah. Watch what will happen to your heart. Those are keys for your heart. Remove the emotion from anger. Watch what will happen. I love your question, by the way. I think it's an excellent question. Because wisdom would dictate that, no, I have to stand up sometimes. But how do I stand up? I stand up, but I don't change my heart. I stand up with wisdom against someone, I don't change my heart. It stays with that mercy. That is beautiful when you can do that. When you can maintain mercy to the last second with your enemy. Asante. Asante. It's that emotional state. But that will give you the best decision making. Because Allah is there. Once Allah is there, everything opens up to you. You see reality differently. That is the beauty. When anger takes over, it skews your reality. And I'm not telling you anger is not a good thing. Anger, when it's used in the proper place, as we're talking about wisdom, Imam Ali says, he says, you are as brave as how much anger you can muster. You need anger in certain situations. So again, wisdom is application of the knowledge, which is completely different. I presented the knowledge with one application. I didn't give other applications. But thank you for asking that, for that clarification. Excellent. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Excellent. You had a question, sister. Alhamdulillah. I'm glad. Don't make it too hard. Okay? <laughs> Not knowing our reason for creation, okay? Yes. 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 Okay, so it's, it's a beautiful question, and it's, it's a, but I'm going to run away from it. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay, your question is, is, is really deep, and you're 100% you're right. That satisfaction is not present. So I'm going to repeat the question so uh, people can, can also be watching. Um, so your question is, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay? Your question is if, number one, I'm trying to connect, okay, and I'm dissatisfied because you use the word dissatisfaction, okay? Now, the main thing that you're saying is for dissatisfaction to exist in the heart, this dissatisfaction to exist is because people what?
don't really know, number one, who really Allah is. That's number one. Okay. But number two, you really said that the main important thing is when someone is dissatisfied, they're, they're to a place where, um, what is the word you used? I'm sorry, why are we created? So the reason for the dissatisfaction is the creation aspect, correct? That, that's what you said. So knowing why I was created helps fill the heart with the right satisfaction. That's the reverse logic, correct? Okay, now if that's the case, is knowing why I was created the most important thing? That's one question, okay? Second thing is why was I created? Can anybody know that, does anybody know? Does anybody know the philosophy that we have of why we're created? Why did Allah create us? So nobody knows? I don't know either, I'm joking. Okay, so th there's a philosophical rule that we have, and this is what we use. Number one, this was also stated by Sayyid, Sayyid Munir al-Khabbaz. That's why you should watch these things. He has many of these, okay? And it's, it's amazing what this man has brought. Please, if you don't know who he is, listen to him. He's an incredible mind. It's people like that do not come around. They don't understand what this, mashallah, this Sayyid is not just the norm, okay? So now, this is what he says. There's a philosophical law that if I don't have something and I'm not complete in it, I need to what? Complete it. Okay? I'm just going to give the bare minimum. From there, if I have completed it, I will just live out my nature. Correct? So, to give you an example, if I'm a person who's stingy, if I'm a person who's stingy, what do I have to do to become what? Giving. What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Come on, guys. To remove stinginess, I have to give, right? Because I'm incomplete. I'm not complete. So I have to practice till I become what? A giver. I become what? The giving, the title. What's the, what's the value and the virtue? I become generous. Allah's values is what? Isn't Allah all generous? Absolutely. So now, what happens if I'm naturally a giver? What happens if I'm naturally a giver? Allah has created me with abundance in my heart. And guess what? I just give. Ana kareem. My nature is what? The way Allah created me is a generous aspect to me. There's a generous aspect. So what do I do? I just do it. So I fulfill my nature. In the same way that this person's nature is that, Allah is always a giving aspect. Allah is always in a state of giving. Allah always lives by that nature. When I give, when I give, what happens? I'm living out my natural creation. Therefore, my action coincides with what? My original what? Aspect. So Allah does the same thing with us. Allah is also in His nature when He's giving us. In terms of that value, in terms of who we have. Allah is showing His nature of generosity. Allah is showing that, look, I've created you. I didn't have to. But it's my nature to always give. So it's part of his lutf. It's part of his own being, living out in terms of what he needs to show. Because he wanted to show his own what? Creation. In terms of who he is. In terms of that aspect. When something is living its nature, what happens to them? They're just being what? It's Allah's nature to create. It's Allah's nature to give. It's Allah's nature to be what? Generous. Because that's His essence. So when you're like that, this is what you get. Allah created that for that because He was just giving. 
we don't realize in many ways, I'm not, there's a lot more to this, and there's a lot of parts I, I had to leave out, I'm sorry. But th this is really the main reason that we were created, because Allah wanted to show really what he, in terms of his own ability, his generosity, everything in terms of that aspect. And now look, will you appreciate that? What I've given you? That abundance that I've shown you? In terms of the Quran, it says, Which of my bounties Allah's challenging are you going to call me a liar for? How much do I have to give? Allah is abundance. Do you see that? That satisfaction is a void. We don't feel abundant. And you're 100% right, by the way, in terms of that feeling, that dissatisfaction. I don't know how to connect to Allah. That connection, and I want to submit to Allah, I have voids. But again, the, 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 the question is so general that when you apply, there's so many specifics underneath, and everyone has a frequency. It just depends on the person. But I can give you generalities, but and when it's applied on specifics, it can go in a million different ways. Because your question is really an application question. There are rules I can give you. I can give you general rules, but I can't give you specifics. It's too difficult. I don't think I did a great job with that, but there's a, I can send you a presentation that will explain everything if you want. It's just, your question is, <laughs> it's, 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 I had to literally like take about maybe at least, <laughs> it's, it's an hour presentation of the Sayyid. So it takes at least three, four hours to probably explain. But it's a, it's a beautiful question. So does it. Sure. Yes. Mm hmm Yes. Mm. Mm. Excellent. Excellent. That's a, that's a way to inject emotion into your heart. Um, and what the Sayyid just said is, someone who has a hard heart, okay, what they can do is go sit with an orphan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi has a hadith on that. A person came to him and he says, um, I have a hard heart. I suffer from a hard heart. What should I do? He says, take an orphan and have dinner with him. What the Sayyid said is, it's like wipe your hand on the, hand of, on the head of an orphan. Okay? It, it makes the heart soft. It makes it where it's, it's, it's alive. It, comes, it changes. It gives you a different emotional code because you feel mercy. That's literally what you're trying to feel. Look, this person, my God, look what they have to face. So that's a beautiful way of actually, again, look at this, these hadith. They're medicine for your heart. Really, that's what they're there for. So with that, if there's any other questions, and I really have to go, I'm sorry. <laughs> but Salah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Thank you, Hajj Hussam, for that very powerful presentation. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, let us recite Fatiha for the Shifa, the healing of our loved ones, and especially the mother of Hajj Hussam, and to the souls of those of our departed loved ones. Let us recite Salat al-Fatiha, Ba'da Salati ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.